Well, welcome to this next section in John's Gospel. Again, we're going to see John giving us evidence about Jesus. Evidence which calls for belief in Jesus. Belief which leads to life through Jesus. And as always, I encourage you to take some time just to read through this passage for yourself. Just familiarize yourself with um, the text, with what's happening in this part of John's Gospel. Take some time to pray. Ask God to help you to understand this part of his word and pray that this would be more than just an academic exercise. Pray that God would, by his spirit, take this truth and plant it deep in you. That this growing evidence about Jesus would grow your belief in him and cause you to rejoice in the life that is available through him. Now, a large portion of this text is just a discourse that Jesus is giving uh, we know that he's talking primarily to the Jewish leaders. And when you are digging into a discourse like this, it's worth trying to see what the heart of the discourse is. And in my working through it, I think that verse 24, um, even 24 and 25, are really the heart of the discourse. And we'll, I'll show you a little bit later why I think that. One of the other tools I used was just to separate out uh, the key characters in the story and as I pointed out Jesus is talking to the Jewish leaders and we see they are trying to they're persecuting Jesus they're trying to kill Jesus um, and Jesus is answering them and because this is giving us evidence about Jesus in John's gospel Jesus is uh, the main character And one of the key accusations that the Jewish leaders make in this section is that Jesus is making himself equal with God. Um, and we see in this section that Jesus himself speaks about God, his Father, a whole lot. And he is indeed making himself, showing himself to be equal with God. So it's worth just seeing all the things that are said in this passage about God the Father. So all of this is building the evidence about Jesus, what he's telling us about himself. And life is a big thing that we see in this section, um, saying that just as the father raised the dead and gives life, even so the son gives life. And then the key verse, as I said, this eternal life to those who believe in Jesus. They'll cross over from death to life. Those who hear will live. Just as the Father has life, so the, he is granted also with the Son to have life in himself. And those who hear Jesus' word and believe in him who sent him have this eternal life. And they will therefore be among those who are counted as those who have done what is good. They will rise to live. And the good here that Jesus is talking about is not ultimately the good works that we do in order to gain life because we can't be good enough for God. The good that we do in this context is hearing his voice and getting eternal life through Jesus. Any other good works are not the basis of our salvation. They are the evidence of those who have been saved. So Jesus is definitely not talking about a, a works-based salvation here. Another repetition that we see here is this idea of hearing, uh, hearing the voice of the Son. And those who hear will live. And in the end, the time is coming when all will hear his voice. One day, everyone will hear the voice of Jesus. Now, in a discourse like this, where you see phrases like this, very truly, I tell you, uh, they also just help uh, put some focus on what Jesus is saying. So those are words that are worth looking out for. And so in this whole passage, the Son, Jesus, is making himself equal with God. He's showing that he is equal with God. Just as God is able to give life, so the Son is able to give life. But it's more than just uh, the life-giving that the Son comes to bring. Jesus also speaks about judgment that all in judgment has been entrusted to him. This word 
uh, condemned is the same word. Uh, so they'll either rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to judgment. It's the same, same word in the Greek. And we see here, they'll either rise to live or rise to be condemned. There are only two options. Now Jesus does make a couple of claims in this section that show that he is equal with God. He says, just as his father is always at work, so I am working too. He's saying, I'm equal with God. In verse 19, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. And then he builds on that argument. So he says, for the son, the father loves the son. And four, just as the father raised the dead. Moreover, it could also be translated for the father judges no one but has entrusted judgment to the son. And all of this with a purpose. So that all may honor. May honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father. And so what John is doing in this section is he is recording this discourse where Jesus was addressing the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders had been upset by what Jesus did on the Sabbath. If you think about the context, the beginning of chapter 5, uh, Jesus has just healed a paralyzed man. That made these leaders angry enough that they began to persecute him. But Jesus' statement makes them more angry. Uh, not only was he breaking the Sabbath, he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. And John is building the evidence to show, yes, indeed, he is making claims that he's equal with God. And what we need to do is think back over what we've seen in John's gospel up till this point. Jesus has been doing things that only God can do. So he is making himself equal with God. He's claiming that he's equal with God. And he's already done things that will back up his claim. But here in verse 20, he says, For the Father loves the Son and has shown him all he does, yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. Uh, John is telling us that greater things are still to come. Now, this is ultimately pointing us to the greatest work of Jesus, the greatest evidence that should cause us to believe, the evidence that gives us life, the greatest work when Jesus died on the cross to win this life for us. And John, at the heart of it, is saying, we need to be among those who believe. If you trace that word believe through the whole of John's gospel, it comes up over and over again. John wants us to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, because only in Jesus is life. And the amazing thing here is in verse 24, it says, has eternal life. It's a, a present reality. It's not something we're waiting for in the future. If you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. It's life that begins now and continues on forever. And verse 25 shows us that now is the time. It has now come this time when the dead will hear. If you go and read Ezekiel 37, you get this picture of the Valley of Dry Bones. And in many ways, Jesus is this voice speaking to make the spiritually dead, that picture that, that Ezekiel was given, to make them live. Whoever here, those who hear, will live. And that time is now. But there is a time coming, a future time, when all, who are in their graves, will hear. They will come out and they will face judgment. And it will be based on what they've done with Jesus. Now, as we read further in the New Testament, one of the most astounding things is that Jesus, who is equal with God, if you go and read Philippians 2, we are told that he did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. So he used his equality with God for our advantage because he gave up his life. He crossed over from death, from life to death so that we might cross over from death to life. 
he, the one who will judge, took the judgment upon himself. So he didn't consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. He used it for ours. And John wants us to hold on to this truth and rejoice in it and believe it so that we might have life. So as you dig in further into this passage, I pray that it would thrill your heart. I pray that as you teach it to others, it, we would be amazed remembering that Jesus is indeed equal with God. He is the second person of the Trinity. He is the Son who gives life, but he's also the Son who will judge. And so John wants us to believe in him, because those who believe in him have eternal life and will not be judged guilty because the guilt of our sin has been taken by Jesus if we believe in him, if we trust in him for salvation. So this passage is causing us to marvel at who Jesus is and then what he has made possible for us as we believe in him. So as you dig in further, I pray that this passage will thrill your own heart and as you teach it to others, may it also motivate us to realize that Jesus is the one who is coming again to judge. And those who aren't honoring the Son will face an eternity without him. So we need to be holding out the truth of who Jesus is, holding out this evidence, calling people to believe so that others might find this life too. Well, God bless as you dig in further. Thank you.